Now that we know a few rules about how to integrate simple functions, we're going to start to look at some of the methods that we can use to deal with more complicated issues. And the first one that we look at is called the general power rule, and it's an exa example of substitution. So while we've got these rules, things get messy. Sometimes we'll be able to see that we need to integrate something that looks like a function and its derivative appearing together in the integrand. So when I see something like 3x, and maybe in brackets an x squared plus 1, I can see that here in the, in the brackets I've got a x squared function, and I know that when I differentiate x squared, I just get a constant times x. I've got a constant here times x. It's not exactly the derivative of x squared, but it's only a constant different, a constant multiplier if you like. So often when we have this sort of situation, this function and its derivative together in the integrand, we can make a substitution to make the problem easier. And that's what we're going to do now. We have already been doing these. Whenever I talk about doing a guess and check on something with brackets, well, we can actually formalize that a bit and write it in terms of a general power rule. And it's all based on one of the rules that we already know. And that is that the integral of a power of x is given by x to one higher power divided by the same number plus a c uh, with that not working when n is minus 1. So ignore n equals minus 1 for a minute. So basically what we're going to do is figure out a version of this rule that works for when we've got not just x to the n but a function to the nth power. So in other words when we have function raised to a power in the integrand we can sometimes make a, a substitution to make it easier to integrate. And the time that we can use this is when we've got that function raised to a power and its derivative also appears in the integrand or a constant multiple of it. And the way it looks in rule form is shown right here. So it's slightly different from the simple power rule and that's why it's called the general power rule. But what we're saying is if we have some function u to the nth power and then this weird looking thing du of x. Well don't worry about that for the moment. I'll show you what I mean by that in the minute in the next couple of slides, but basically it means the derivative is in there somewhere. Uh, anyway, the result for that would be u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. And again, I've made that same typo. So let's check it out what I mean. Let's say we've got to find the indefinite integrals with respect to x for the following functions. So first of all, we've got the integral of 2x, x squared plus 3 to the 3 with respect to x. Now what I'm saying here is that I've got some function to a power. So I'm going to say let that function be u. u equals x squared plus 3. Well then I can see over here I've got something which looks like the derivative of that function. And let's just check that. du dx for x squared plus 3 is actually 2x. Okay, And that's exactly what I've got there. 2x, the derivative and the function. Now the thing that we're going to do is a tricky replacement of dx. And we're going to do that using this derivative. I'm actually going to re rearrange it and write du equals 2x dx. Now it's a bit tricky, but we can do that and replace 2x dx in our original integral with du. So I'm going to get a new version of this integral, still the same thing, but I'm going to have x squared plus 3, which is u cubed, and then 2x dx becomes du. So I've got rid of every appearance of x in my integral and I've just got what looks like a pretty simple u integral. So I should get u to the 4 over 4 plus a constant. Well that's fair enough, that's the result for u, but we had an original problem in terms of x's. So the idea is that you rewrite that in the x form, so u gets replaced with x squared plus 3. It's to the fourth power divided by 4, and plus c. And that kind of makes sense. You can go back and check that. So if we were going to differentiate this, we want to end up with 2x, x squared plus 3 to the 3. c would differentiate away to 0, and we'd use the chain rule here to get 1 on 4 times 4, which goes away, x squared plus 3 to the 3, and the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So we'd end up with exactly the integrand that we had in the start. So let's see if we can do that again for the next question, which says f of x is pi cos x times sine cubed x. 
So why don't you pause for a second and see if you can identify u, find its derivative, and make the substitution back to try to change the integral to a u integral. So remembering that we're trying to identify a power of some function, the only power I can really see in here is the cube of sine of x. So what I'm going to do is let u be sine x. Then I'll look at the derivative of that. And the derivative is, of course, cos x. And I notice that that derivative does appear in the integral as well. So I've got this u thing cubed. I've got something to do with u's derivative. And I've got a constant. I'm not going to worry about that. I can leave that out the front. So I've then actually got the integral of u cubed. And remembering what we did just a moment ago, we rearrange this to say that du is cos x dx. That's exactly what we've got in our integrand up here, cos x dx. So I can get rid of that and replace it with u. So I've got an integral of u cubed du, which is just an easy power rule. So we've got pi u to the 4 on 4 plus a constant, and then changing back to the x form. So we have pi times u to the 4, which is sine to the 4 of x, all over 4 plus c. And again, feel free to check that one. You'll notice the 4 comes out, cancels, sine goes to the cube, and we differentiate sine to get cos, and we end up with the integrand from the original problem. So it all works out nicely. So. That's the idea of the general power rule, how we deal with things where we've got a function raised to a power and the derivative of that function appears in the integral somewhere. What can we do now? We can go and read section 5.3 of the text or any other text where they're looking at power rule of integration or integration by substitution. But note that this is just one small part of substitution integration. We can have a look at some of the exercises from the worksheet or the text and in the next video, we're going to have a look at some more substitution methods to advance this a bit further.